good, good, good. Okay, all right. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Vertigree table where we're doing D20 questions with Taylor. Taylor, I'm very happy to have you here. Thank you for thank you for joining us today. Hello, I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> If you if you don't recognize Taylor, it's because she just started and you're about to recognize her because she is going to quickly uh, exceed my channel. Um, ah. She is crushing it on the uh, the the airwaves of YouTube, and um, <laughs> is mostly doing uh, TTRPG horror stories, which I have mixed feelings about. But I have consumed a ton of your videos in the last couple of days. <laughs> like, it's it's that cringy feeling of the office. Yes. But then the but then the part of your brain realizes like oh this happened this like this has happened to, to real people and like you know especially as a dungeon master like I've been responsible for like preventing things like that from happening occasionally but and it, it it is gratifying to it makes me feel lucky <laughs> basically yeah. to have have been blessed with all of the all of the good people I have played with but um uh, yeah I mean how did you I mean I imagine you don't just dive into Reddit because you are thinking about a youtube concept like you have you been like eating those like popcorn until you feel sick for a long time before you started sharing them with the world uh yes um definitely before i started youtube i actually watched like a ton of like crit crab crit crab oh mm. my gosh mm. and Drake, and then just also like browsing the rpg reddit horror stories subreddit um yeah, I had a lot of time before I started my channel. I it was like a long story, but I got like really, really sick. So I was like off work for like months. Um, so I kind of just like fell down the rabbit hole and that's kind of what got me into it. And I was like, hey, I kind of want to talk about this because nobody's not nobody, but like people who women haven't really been talking about it. Like that's kind of that's like what I'm trying to get at. And I think um, I think that's why I like what you're doing and reached out to you because it's not just like here's here's easy content that will get me views. It's also like you stop and you like you have uh, you respond to it. You have commentary about like why the thing that you're talking about is bad and wrong and crazy, which um, is unfortunately a public service for some people yeah. this year. Um, yeah. And I like you often speak directly to like to OP, which is the um, yeah, yeah, you just bring like heart to it. You're not it doesn't it doesn't feel exploitive. You're like almost like out there correcting for it as much as any one person on the Internet can. Um, so, yeah, thank you. That's kind of good for you. I don't even know that there, there wasn't a question there. But uh, yeah, I I respect that a lot because that's not I don't know. I don't I don't really enjoy TTRPG horror stories because I think it's funny. I, I was just asked this by somebody else. It 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 can paint the the hobby in a certain light, and there's certain stereotypes that are very much outdated. But um th these are real life stories, and there's thousands of them. You don't <laughs> like this is real. Um so yeah, has it I think the question is, are you okay? Because you, you've you been doing it every day, exposing yourself, going into the the, the minds <laughs> of the the, the 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 subreddit of horror stories. Like, you're you're good. Has it like reshaped your your view of the hobby or people in general? Or how, how's that going? How's that treating you? You can abstain well, too. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. Like, I don't mind talking about it. I yeah, definitely for that for like the first month that I like really went hard and I posted videos every single day um I was having to like look on the subreddit and like find like really bad stories mm -hmm. so I was like just constantly like from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to bed I was just reading awful stories which wasn't great for my mental health mm -hmm. which is why I am posting like every other day now instead of every single day um yeah it's I mean, it's easy to become like disillusioned with the hobby and with people with reading all of that. But like, it's just it's you just got to like remind yourself that like these stories are crazy, but everything is few and far between. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I only have like a couple horror stories and like horror stories is like, no, I don't even have any like horror stories, just kind of like eh, stories like these are just some standalone not great people and stories 
Yes. Um, so go, go links where the links are going downstairs, go <laughs> binge a bunch of Taylor's content. Uh, cause it is, it is fun and horrifying and will, and again, it will make you feel grateful if you have a good group. Um, don't take that for granted. <laughs> there's, no, some, literally. <laughs> there's some weird stuff going on out there. And, um, I, I do, th I do think it's important to like look at stuff a healthy amount, right? There's like a, you can overindulge, but like, I think it's important to recognize that that is out there because I've also had a couple, I, I just started a new series on like beginner based. And like, I talk about session zero and why it's important and why you should do it. Um, and honestly, that's not like the thrust of my content or the video or whatever. That's just like, this is a thing you should know. Um, and I always get pushback, always get pushback. And I think it, I think I'll, to, 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 to be uh, optimistic, I think a lot of it, and clearly not all of it, but a lot of it comes from uh, not knowing what you don't know. I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of one, there's a lot of dudes out there <laughs> who have been, uh, you know, you've been playing with the same people since you were 12 years old. You don't need the X card, right? Like if you're making the same jokes you were making when you were 12 years old and someone new comes to the table, someone who's coming from a different set of experiences than you um then yeah it's 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 worth opening up the conversation a little bit be like hey is there anything like i don't know hey man my dog just died so if we don't kill wolves today that would be great like it can be as simple as that it doesn't have to be a whole traumatic like oh i have ptsd because this horrible thing happened like it can be very small um, and you can chase people away if you're not aware of it. So uh, again, you don't have to do it every day or every other day, but I do I do think you are doing um, a, a, a service as much as much as you are entertaining us. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm definitely uh, down in the mines, like getting all dusty and dirty and uh, just so that everybody else can like look at the diamonds, you know? <laughs> mm, mm. Well, okay. So speaking of diamonds, I, your, your do's and don'ts uh, is the other side of your channel. And I do enjoy that. And I think that's, that's more of like my, <laughs> uh, yeah. my, my vibe. Um, so yeah, I, there, there, it is not just that over there. Don't put, don't put Taylor in a box. There's, there's more to it than that, but uh, oh man, some of those horror stories uh, stick with you. I'm not going to ask you for your favorite because I'm afraid. Um, to <laughs> that, that, um, <laughs> So yeah, if if you're if you're ready, we're gonna roll some dice and, and get some questions going. How's that yeah. feel? Okay, cool. I'm, I'm uh, ready, ready to go. <laughs> all right, roll me a, a d twenty. Great. Okay, we just yeah. I should probably say since probably in your other videos you've been using the online dice. I'm so bad at technology, so I'm using my real dice because I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> yeah. First, what's your favorite virtual tabletop? I imagine you don't play online very very much yeah, if you can no, I like if someone asks me that I'm like I uh online uno I mm, guess mm. <laughs> I'm just yeah I mean yeah. pre pre covid I did not like online like I, I don't think I had I played like once or twice online just like experimenting with other like systems or stuff but like yeah. covid taught me and I I run I run Albert Rodeo I run very basic stuff um so yeah if you can play in person again don't take that for granted <laughs> Because yes. that, that could be taken away from us again at some point. Uh, what what'd you get yep. on the D20? Oh, okay. I got a 12. 12. All right. Um, ooh, how deadly do you like your game? Ooh, okay, okay. That's a good one. Um, This might be a little controversial, but... Yeah, bring I it. Don't, I don't like it too deadly. Like, I... As a D, like when I when I DM, I okay, I still like to make the stakes like high. You know, mm -hmm. they could die or could get like seriously injured or somebody's gonna get kidnapped or, or blah 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 anything like that. But um, uh, I I don't know. I just I know how hard <laughs> players work on their like especially my players. Like they work really really hard on their characters and like. I have, like, I, I love my players so much. Like, they send me, like, whole, like, essays of their backstory, and I mm. know how hard they work. So I I try to make it not super deadly, but I try to make the stakes high in other places rather than not life or death. To be fair, in my games, it's more role-play encounters rather than, like, hard, hard combat. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where I'm at. But definitely in their last, like, boss battle, like, they they were downed they were like two of them were downed so i wasn't i didn't hold back there 
Um, yeah, I I always I don't know. I always act like I'm trying to kill my players all of the time. Um, <laughs> but there are there are other ways to create st stakes, especially in five e, where like death is not. You know, after yeah. a couple levels, you're, that's nothing like, anyway. Which felt like you're like, I would, we're fine. Yeah. Like, we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> um but i say I, i'm not trying to kill you but i'm I, like i'm never trying to kill you but i'm always trying to almost kill you <laughs> yes <laughs> that yes. is the that is the, the the sweet spot for me um mm -hmm. just gotta like just just gotta put in the trauma just a little bit you know just to give you some more backstory and interesting character things uh, yeah and there are <laughs> there are other better ways to to make them sweat narratively right if you're if you're exactly. other than the numbers right zero hp <laughs> is is not the worst thing that can happen to a character yeah yeah <laughs> or a player for that matter uh, <laughs> um, all right good answer i like that uh give me thank give you. me another d20 please and thank you okay okay Ooh, a two. Two. There's no there's no bad ones in here. Um but there is there there is a there is a tonal shift, I think, through the numbers. Mm, okay. uh, what is your least favorite aspect of running games? And I'll also accept playing games. But what is your least favorite aspect? Um I'd say probably the hours of prep work beforehand. Oh. Like I I know, like it's I, I love like writing the stories and I love like coming up with things and I love being creative in that sense. Mm -hmm. But like when I'm on my like 12th NPC, I'm I'm like fantasy name generators like coming up with like Schmelblith, the goblin. And I'm like, I <laughs> God, Schmelblith, I I I can't you're supposed to have information, but my brain just just can't figure out what you're supposed to have and what like this goes here. And because I, I like games where like I said, role play and like kind of political intrigue and stuff is mm. more the the vibes of the game. So I'm like, God, this character is with this house and then they know him with here. And yeah, <laughs> it can get a little bit uh, mentally draining with those aspects. But I love the creation and like being creative and making all of that. Um, yeah, but I'd say like my least favorite. It's just the most draining part. It's not really my like i hate it it's just a little bit mentally draining sometimes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no i i i respect that that makes a lot of sense to me actually i think that's maybe that's one of the least uh supported aspects of uh running the game in this particular system there's i mean in 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 the official context there's a lot of like third party tools that actually like, help yeah. with that quite a bit um but yes here's here's a game about three things but 90 percent of the book is about one of those things <laughs> yeah literally it's like how do you run combat how do you run a dungeon i'm like that's great i know how to do that now but what about everything else yes <laughs> yes, yes yes um yeah yeah i do a lot of npc consolidation and like function stacking um and i don't really I make a lot of like bullet pointed NPCs and don't super develop anybody because you never know who they're gonna like. And Schmelblin yeah. the Goblin turns out to be the their 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 new mascot. And like this dude was supposed to drop in two rounds of combat, and now he's <laughs> part of the team. Like, ah, yeah. okay, like I'll work on that <laughs> next time. Like <laughs> he's still a little cagey because he doesn't trust you. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh! In, in my first um like uh uh I think session uh one or two, I can't really remember. Um, in a campaign that like just ended, uh, they literally just were going to the city that w the campaign was going to take place in. So I had just had like some like basically random encounters mm -hmm. like as in the forest and uh, there was like bandits and this bandit cap captain named like they asked for his name and I was like a, a beggar, a beggar, mm -hmm. beggar bandits. That's what that's what he's called. And he became like a major NPC in the whole campaign like he came i brought him back like so many times in the city like he was like a major npc and like he was just supposed to be a bandit captain with no name but my players were like hey man why are you doing this like wh why are you jumping people in the middle of the forest like that's like what's going on and he's like well, i don't i don't know i you know i did it you know and then you just gotta come up with something on the spot <laughs> I grew up a beggar. I didn't really have a lot of options. And, yeah. Exactly. That's why my name's beggar. <laughs> like, 
Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's always interesting when you're like, I don't know anything about this person, and you're forcing them to self-reflect. <laughs> I know, it's like, uh, uh, okay, well, all right, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, it teaches you. Then that's the part where you're playing the game, too. Like, exactly. I think a lot of newer dungeon masters are like, I need to be, I need to control everything and be prepared for anything and like have the decision tree of all the answers of all the questions they might ask the NPC. And it's like, you don't know what's coming yeah. and that's okay. Oh. <laughs> it teaches you. <laughs> Uh, it's helped me uh, surrender control in a lot of aspects of life and just like roll with things. Uh, I, I'm, just, I'm still working on that, but um, all right. One more D20. Awesome. Let's okay. Let's see what we get. Let's, let's go nat 20. Let's go nat 20. Let's, let's go do nat it. 20. Nat 20 is a good one. Oh, I got a 19. You got a, ooh, so close. So close. And that's, how we, and that's how so. we know you're not fudging. <laughs> um ooh, what is your concept for your next campaign or game even if and i'm going to add here especially if it's never going to happen Ooh, well i do have a concept and um i, I actually think it, it might happen but probably in like a little bit uh for like a youtube playthrough maybe oh okay I, yeah um I get a lot of my like game ideas from puns or uh, just like weird things that like pop into my head or things that you're like not supposed to do or, or... anyways I, I like like uh, it doesn't make sense I'm gonna I'm gonna keep talking here <laughs> well, uh, hold please um, things you're not supposed to do like as a dungeon master or like like social yes. taboos okay we're both uh, I guess. as a dungeon master so okay. My next campaign uh, that I'm thinking of running, like for YouTube, is I think it's going to be called the Dragons on a Train. So I'm literally going to railroad <laughs> my players because they're going to be on a train and a mm. railroad train. So mm. I was like, mm. I I'm going to railroad them. <laughs> but obviously, they're still going to have their own agency and they can do whatever they want. But I, it, the idea came out of, well, as a DM, you're not supposed to railroad because that's like no fun for the players. What if they were literally on a train? Like. <laughs> I I am so against the like the one true way to play D D D is seventeen games duct taped yeah. together. And, like start it's like and you can come and get purist and stuff, but like the origins of D D, it's some homebrew rules that they started xeroxing. I don't even mimeographing um <laughs> that were for a different set of combat rules, and I told you to go buy a different game for the exploration side of it. So it's already three things stapled together, and like I think I'll, there's a lot of. <laughs> arguments on reddit and other places about uh the right and the wrong and it's like it's it's all of these things and that's the best part of it and you get to make it your own and figure out what you enjoy and what the people at your table enjoy so that actually really appeal i mean one the dragons on a train is just a, <laughs> very evocative um but you like yeah i like you learn all the rules and then you start breaking all the rules because like a linear a linear dungeon is boring it's like only if you're boring <laughs> yeah <laughs> like it's, it's the limits to creativity make it more interesting like you can come up with solutions to the fact that like they have to get through this car to get to that car because like no they do yeah, like they can go underneath and that's dangerous they go on the roof uh, that's in every movie like yeah so they are they, they so the, uh, Follow-up question: Is the dragon driving the train, or is it the engine, or are they the dragons? Who, where's the dragon? Well, okay, I I don't want to spoil the spoiler. Campaign. I was about to say spoilers. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like, I the the title is kind of like evocative of like snakes on a plane, so dragons on a train. Uh, um, you, I I only know this because I have little nephews. There there what there is a dino. Di, I don't know if it's dinosaur. I think it's dinosaur train. I don't know if it's dinosaurs yeah. on a train, but dinosaur train is a thing, which I would, which yeah. you know, five year old Ryan would have loved. Um, yeah <laughs> well i i've auditioned uh for that show for a voice actor like so many times <laughs> for for dinosaurs on a train is what you voice acted for is yeah, what you, you auditioned for yeah for dinosaur train like all of the the that's why i know what they are because like oh. all the, like those like i i also do voice acting and regular acting and blah 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 so ah <laughs> uh, it's all it's all coming together yeah it's it comes it comes through yes Start, oh, start streaming um we will <laughs> we will watch <laughs> thank you um especially if it's yeah if it dragons on a train i'm already i'm already in let's go <laughs> um Yay. i will i will say there's some um uh, uh, uh technical aspects to, to to streaming so maybe you want to delegate those get your uh <laughs> get, a, yeah. get a get a player to handle that side of it 
somebody else to do that for me. Yeah, the dungeon master doesn't have to do all the things, okay? <laughs> yeah, right? It's just like, why, why do I have to be the tech guy and also the dungeon master? Mm -hmm. I should Let's delegate, okay? <laughs> yes, yes. Good leaders delegate. Key. Yes. Uh, give me another d20. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to beat dragons on a train, but let's let's see what we get. Ooh, ooh, okay, okay. Um, okay, I just rolled another 19. So... So that means lightning round if you're ready for it. Oh ooh. my god. Wait, so like one, like basically like one sentence? No, I'm just... not going to hold you to anything. Uh, <laughs> um, I just, <laughs> it's just a bunch of questions. I am a big fan of digression, so... Uh, but it, start, it starts off spicy. Do you fudge? Uh, yes. I okay. do. <laughs> uh, I like that you didn't feel the need to defend that because everyone always does. But the answer has been yes every time so far. Uh, favorite dice size. And this has been confusing for some folks. So not your favorite physical, like the dice that you have, but like out of all, like D4, D6, D8, D10, D12, do you have a favorite? D4. Because it's the most. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, I think it's just the most, I think it's just like the most fun to look at actually my, i don't even have a regular d4 in this set i have like a little uh i like um, those because i because yes. d4 is my least favorite um so i like those weird like that's pretty i hadn't seen those until like i don't know six eight months ago these like truncated d8s that they're coming out with like thank you um, <laughs> yeah yeah it's what well, that's the most controversial thing you've said so far i know you were afraid that you're gonna make people upset by railroading no it's the d4 comment that's gonna get hate no it's the, yeah it's the <laughs> d4 i'm, I'm sorry i'm gonna make a formal apology now I'm sorry. I like the tours. Not big you to you. Don't apologize. Um, <laughs> published adventures or homebrew? Homebrew for sure. Uh, encumbrance? Question mark. Um, I just give them a bag of holding. Good answer. Uh, favorite class? Mm, wizard. <laughs> favorite uh ancestry, lineage, race, species, whatever we want to. That refer that to. one. That one is hard. Um. Mm. I that one's so hard I like I really I like I like halflings halflings are pretty good mm -hmm, mm -hmm. pretty good pretty uh, good we, come on what else, what else you got okay okay give um, us the list it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be one answer okay well I am wearing elf ears I do like elves um, like pretty much my first character was drow um I, I do like drow um and I think dragonborn and tieflings are also pretty cool so Okay. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna substitute the next question for like uh like Tolkien elves are just like slightly more attractive humans that live forever and don't have to deal with mortality, or like creepy Celtic, uh can I have your name please? And now you never remember it and don't eat the food and you you'll never return. Uh where do you, where do you fall on the the spectrum there? Oh okay, it like it really depends. I'm I'm pretty like open to everything. Hmm. um it, it depends on what kind of character i want to play um sometimes i would love to go like like very much fey trickster steal your name elf and sometimes i want to just go like very like ethereal and can live forever and hmm. just like doesn't really give much of a toss you know <laughs> like <laughs> that kind of thing they're always british they're always british they're the, always British. the I fancy know. ones the high elves are british and then the trickstery ones are the irish ones um <laughs> yes <literally. laughs> <laughs> but like uh, those even like the high elves like you know like uh like galadriel is terrifying if you piss her off like just oh, yeah. you don't that you don't have to choose actually it's a it's a fake question good good job it was a trick question uh Thank you. Roll, roll, roll for stats standard array or point by uh roll roll for stats Ooh. it's more fun yeah 3D, 3d6 down the line 4d6 drop the lowest what's your um normally the lowest because mm -hmm. i think it makes for more interesting characters like mm -hmm. if characters have flaws then i don't know they're more real and they're more and they're easier to like role play god yes you're i know what your best stat is because of the class you picked like that's boring yeah. i've seen it before what are you bad at that's where the that's where the story's gonna exactly yeah yeah that's, that's the where good, you're that's... gonna have the hardships mm -hmm. that's the challenges that's the good that's the good stuff yeah um do you go for more balance when you're running a game balance or more like verisimilitude more more truthiness 
wait, can you be more like a little bit? Sure, uh, sure, sure. Like, ga- yeah. like mm, mechanical balance, right? Like, this is a fair fight versus like, right. you open the door that says dragon, there's a dragon in there. I don't care that you're level three. You're going to get smoked if you're not polite. Gotcha. Um, probably then not balance. Like, I... I, like if if they open a door and like there's like a dragon there, obviously there's gonna be consequences. But I don't think it's fair for like a DM to even like throw a dragon at like a third level party. Like mm. I just <laughs> that's fair. But if they see one and if they choose to like actually like engage in combat, then yeah, there's gonna be consequences. But if they just see one and like the dragon sees them, maybe maybe I don't know. Maybe it'll just be like leave my horde or there will be consequences, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not everything has to be a fight to the death instantly. Yeah. And then you can do all that unfair stuff because I'll, I'll throw a I'll throw a dragon at a level one party. Um <laughs> but it's not just roll for combat. It's like, all right, what do you do? Give it all your gold. And then yeah. and then that's they're gonna think about that for the rest of the campaign and they can't wait to level up and go confront it. Exactly. Um, how do you feel about flying characters at your table? Um it, it depends on if I really want to make it harder for myself. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I I haven't really had a player who's actually flown before, who's been like a flying character, like an Aarakocra. Like I, luckily I haven't had to deal with that, but I mm. have had like, uh, I'm running like a pirate campaign right now. So mm. one of my characters I uh, can just breathe underwater. So like those like different, you know, vertices and I'm like, ah, oh, this is so fun to deal with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I, have a, I have a piece of, I have a piece of paper and now I need a 3D model of this world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I have like a little like like stand, like doll stand where I'm like, ah. Okay. Yeah. So you're you're like 50 feet up. So then that's like, okay, but then your swim speed is like not there. It's like 20. I don't there's like <laughs> yeah now this is a trigonometry problem um, yeah i i i dropped out of math, so i <laughs> uh you you name drop fantasy name generator um but what is your uh like your favorite or your best third party uh tool to help you um well fantasy name generator mm-hmm. and <laughs> i i use D beyond a lot uh that's kind of like my go-to because they've got almost everything even on my like not paid uh subscription that's not yeah <laughs> we're not gonna open that can of worms but uh <laughs> yeah uh i'm not gonna tell you to support or not support them anymore because we-, we won that fight but mm, um <laughs> all right give me give me one more give me one more d20 go for that go for that crit oh okay 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 Let's go. Double 19's announcing me a nap 20. It's a 10. It's a 10. Halfway there. Um, yeah. What is your favorite uh, house rule or a rule you've lifted from another from another system or, or another dungeon master? What's your favorite thing that's not in the book? I mean, I feel like it's it's been said many times before, but the rule of cool. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's like my that's i i love the rule of cool like i if if you're creative as a player and you try to find a different way to problem solve and it doesn't necessarily work in the rules i'm just most of the time gonna let it slide or make you roll something that i've just made up for it like Mm, mm. that's that's basically yeah that's 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 my final answer i guess yeah that's i mean that's a good one as long as everyone's on the same page right as long as it's like you know going into it like this is not the the raw strategy war game style like we're here to tell a story then like the rule of cool is, is almost necessary um exactly yeah and and it's also like good to like set those boundaries where it's like yeah okay i'm gonna let this slide now but that's not how that spell normally works so uh, i'm gonna mm. let it slide because it's cool and it like it, it can be interesting in the situation but uh from now on the spell is gonna work normally like Awesome that you outmaneuvered me, but you know we're we're gonna you know go back to the way it was after this. And I think new dungeon masters need to hear that because a lot of the advice is like be consistent, and it's like you, 
but but don't look up the rule in the middle and slow down gameplay so like make something up and then never change your mind about it and like no, you can reserve the right to be like this is what's going to happen today i'm going to go think about this and maybe next time it's different uh i like that everybody gets one <laughs> like yeah. you get yeah, that's, one that's time never ask for this again um and if you start asking for it again i'm going to retroactively remove it from the first time it happened um <laughs> yeah so every everybody gets one is a good one you're allowed to, you're allowed to do that things can happen like in a bubble and then that's not the new <laughs> the new way things work that's not the new rule yeah definitely um all right i'm gonna give you number 20 because you were Ooh. so nice to answer all the lightning round what is your your best move trick or hack what what is your your dungeon master superpower oh god uh i'd say i'm pretty good at improv mm. uh, i know like all dungeon masters have to be like relatively good at improv or being able to think on their feet but um i think from mm, i think coming from like an acting improv ish background um i i i find that i'm like able to think on my feet a lot faster than like some because i i'm like a relatively new dm as i've been dming for like two years i still call that new mm -hmm. um compared to like you know People have been gaming for like 40 years. Um, <laughs> this hobby's 50 years old. And if you didn't start with Gary Gygax in Wisconsin back in the day, then you're just, you're a baby. Um, yeah, literally. Like yeah. I'm, I'm going to continue calling myself a newbie because I don't have all that experience. But um, yeah, I, I think, I think I, it really just like my improv skills really just helped me dive right into it instead of, being kind of worried about like ah, I don't know every single rule like I have to look it up it's like no I like I don't have to and mm. I'm just gonna go into it with like an open mind and let's say yes mm. yeah that's beautiful that's beautiful I mean I think the improvisational thing you said like a DM has to be good at that uh, most aren't <laughs> until yeah. they've got some years under their belt right unless because it's not it's not the kind of skill set that comes up very often unless you know you you study it essentially right like um i think some some people have like uh, more of a natural talent than others but um i i don't know there's not a lot of places you get to get yes and things yeah. um in a in a in a professional sense right or uh even yeah an educational sense that's an interesting question actually how to practice more improv in your in your day-to-day -day yeah. life um but that's i mean i imagine that yeah that must be a a, a real asset to you it definitely it definitely makes uh the game i think a lot more fun and i think it makes my players a lot more likely to engage in role play because i i just play all the time so <laughs> yeah you can't force people to do it but you can show them how fun it is <laughs> exactly i'm i'm so lucky that like my players are also like uh <laughs> are also just like super into just improv and role play and just like diving into the character stuff like mm. I'm, just, I'm so so grateful for my players <laughs> yeah that's where the good stuff is and if you don't have if you don't have those players and you want them then like you, you run the kind of game you want and find and, and end up on rpg horror stories or yeah. um <laughs> <laughs> or um yeah you're gonna find the player not every there isn't one true way to play dnd um so you're gonna you're gonna find your tribe and sometimes i know i was looking for your tribe for a while um, yeah. um i've been i've been very lucky it sounds like you've been very lucky but yeah people there's different there's different ways to play um i'm weird in that i want i want all of them just at different times like give me the give me the buffet give me the sampler <laughs> like i just yeah. Yeah. what does this knob do what does this knob do um and that's not that's not for everybody <laughs> the yeah. moving target <laughs> um, so yeah it's been yeah i almost i i have thought about taking improv classes only to be a better i mean one to like be social and like have a good time and like i'm a lifelong learner but two to like strictly to be a better dungeon master like <laughs> taking some improv classes um yeah yeah maybe yeah maybe we can figure that out after the stream um <laughs> and i mean I think anything helps <laughs> Uh, okay, we're gonna take uh we're gonna take a short break. We will be right back and we're gonna dive into uh the next half of D20 questions. Yeah. Ignite your imagination and unleash the pure potential of your tabletop role-playing games with the Game Master's Compendium of Explosive Creation. 
jam-packed with ideas, tables, and tools to light up every session, help players develop deep and memorable characters, GMs craft rich and engaging archetypes-based NPCs, and connect all of these characters to the worlds they are exploring in significant and meaningful ways. Laid out in two-page spreads for ease of use in prep and play, the compendium contains motivations so every character always has a satisfying reason why. Calls to adventure that can establish what sent them on their hero's journey or arise to spark a new phase of action. Character arcs to suggest a direction for transformation and personal growth. Assets, allies, and friendly factions that provide players with additional resources as well as relationships that form connections to the larger world. Hundreds of meaningful objects and magic items ensuring there will always be ways to spend gold, reward players, and dangle carrots to get the characters moving. To help game masters build dynamic worlds, there are also ideas for enemy NPCs and rival organizations to serve as antagonists, provocative locations to serve as their lairs or environments to explore, or the setting for combat with some of the hundreds of monster concepts designed to exemplify the themes and resonate with the story being told. And the largest section of each spread is dedicated to plot hooks and story seeds so you will never run out of ideas for new adventures or ways to connect the characters to existing ones. The ease of creating new content and the joy of discovery as connections form provide you with the confidence to know that you can quickly have a new character or scenario or the bones of a full campaign and the freedom to have fun even if everything goes on fire because you can craft a bespoke new world incorporating what everyone is bringing to the table. With this system neutral book by your side, you may even begin to look forward to those moments because you're excited to see what you create next. All right, and we are back and we're going to roll some dice on the Game Masters Compendium of Explosive Creation. Um, so I would like you to pick up one of each die type. Four, oh. six, eight, ten, twelve, twenty. We're not using the D100. That's actually that's elsewhere in the okay. in the conception, but let's just roll up, roll up. Fistful of dice. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I'll, I'll just close this up and I'll show you. Oh, I like that. The uh the Yahtzee method. Let's go. It was also a very satisfying sound. Thank you. Okay. Oh, you're um, not even jumping it out. You're just in the box. Ooh, I like that. Okay. Then I get to like look at it all, or I guess I could like be fudging things, but I won't. I promise. There's no. I mean, there's no. There's 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 one category where the number all like higher is better, but not not really. There's no there's no cheating here. Um, <laughs> but now I need I need a treasure chest. I need a box. I think actually right. oh, well, that's a different thing. Um, <laughs> what did you get on the D20, please and thank you. I got a 15. Uh, okay, and I should say, Taylor chose the barkeep, which is a fine choice. Um, I love the idea. Uh, well, I have my own ideas, obviously. They're all over this page. But like, do you do you have much of a character concept going into this? Is this like a character you've played before? We're going in zero. We're building an NPC for your next session. Um, or it's just um, blank slate. This is pretty much blank slate. I, I have... Uh, a name which is kind of like off my YouTube name, uh, uh, Tilly Tailsmith. So Tilly okay. Tails. Okay. All right. I like it. I like it. Uh, what do you say? Fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. Fifteen. Um. So this is this is our motivation, drives, dreams, aspirations. Uh, secure peace to ensure travel and trade. So oh. maybe things are business is slowing down a little bit at the tavern because. Uh, somebody befriended uh what's his name beggar instead of beggar. dealing with those bandits yeah. <laughs> uh well, yeah what does what that spark for you does that feel like anything oh i'm thinking maybe like trade and business is slow because maybe there's like a rival uh tavern like just across mm. the way and mm. like her tavern's been there for a while she's it's like a family little mom and pop shop so maybe um Maybe maybe she needs to like spruce it up a bit because there's like this whole new like I don't know like club type tavern across. 
<laughs> yeah, these new newfangled whatever ales and I don't, lighting fixtures. I don't <laughs> exactly like <laughs> someone cast dancing light, and now that's like the hip tavern to go to. Yeah, I know. Like all the new bards are like playing there. Mm. All she can get is like uh, the old, not even bard who was like maybe I don't know, maybe a barbarian who just like has like a a little like bass who just goes bing 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 in her tavern. She's got it. She's got to bam it up. And it's like her cousin or something. Like I, the, the idea yeah. that like she's inherited it, right? And she's like, yeah. you're 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 not starting from zero. You're already like digging yourself out of a hole. And it's like it's yeah. this way for generations. Yeah, um, family business. And you can't, yeah, you can't fire the terrible bard. <laughs> yes. It would piss off your auntie or something. Yeah. Um. Okay. So D twelve is our call to adventure, a catalyst. Like, why are we? Why are we not at the hanging out in the tavern? Like, why are why are we now adventuring? Okay, it is a seven. Seven. A wager or a bad deal costs them the bar. Ooh. Oh. <gasps> okay. Maybe. Yeah. She's uh because business is so bad. Maybe she's in debt and mm. she had to make a deal with some. I don't know. Maybe some like shady fellows. Maybe maybe beggar. Maybe beggar and his bandits. They were like, we'll uh uh, uh we'll lend you some money if you. I don't know business stuff <laughs> <laughs> it's insert business stuff here yeah <laughs> uh, uh, so she like lost the bar and now it's maybe her, her quest is to to get the money to get it back because it's a family mm. business that's yeah i mean yeah so so you anchoring it to like yeah this is in her like inheritance and now she's lost the bar like that's that's powerful motivation that'll get you going and like mm, no faster way to get some gold than to go uh dungeon delving right exactly if you if you come back alive exactly <laughs> you're always gonna almost die um <laughs> what did you get on the d8 now this is the this is the one that some people bounce off of but the idea is like this is your uh potential i think i'm actually gonna like insert the word potential in here but like okay. a, a character arc going into it right you don't necessarily want to know everything about your character especially where the story's going before you start mm -hmm. playing the game because the game's going to tell you that but if I'm, I mean, you know better than I, if you have some sort of concept of like what kind of personal growth they might go through, you can kind of like lean into the other other way to start and like look for opportunities to an uh, interesting character grows, an interesting character transforms. Um, and there's already, yeah, there's already a ton of potential here. But what did you get on the on the D8? Three, a D8. Okay, uh, gotta find it. There's like a lot of the box. Oh, I got a two to stuck in one place to seeing the world i mean that clicks in pretty nicely to what you've already established i think yeah right? yeah pretty much like i i assume that since this is a family business she's basically been there her whole life and uh hasn't been able to see the world and now because she is uh uh in debt it's kind of like her call to adventure so she's um She's now she's like, okay, well, I, I have the opportunity now to go on this adventure and and make some money so I can get my bar back, but also being able to see the world. <laughs> yeah, I just had this vision of them as like, like the little kid like busting tables or like de de delivering steins the size of their heads to like the <laughs> table they can barely reach and like, yeah, they grew up here. I'm also I'm getting a little bit of um of the bear vibes but because we just watched that <laughs> did you see the bear tangent no, but oh it's good it's good it is very it is very good highly recommend if you've worked in a kitchen it might give you more anxiety than you can handle at a time <laughs> so small doses but okay phenomenal show um all right i'll check it out do we have do we have like a a class or an ancestry percolating here do we have like a, a more resolved idea for this um adventurer. i'm still thinking halfling uh mm. I oh that's so uh, yeah perfect perfect yeah yes i just picture like the tiny bar has to be on like a stool to like barkeep and then like hops down with like a big tanker and like she has to be like hey who's getting like the five the five tankards of ale like kind of holding it on her back and she's like mm. okay um is okay you're going over the okay over there right um watch it coming through like things like that mm, mm, mm. <laughs> uh, maybe i think class would be kind of kind of interesting i i don't see her having any magical abilities any arcane 
any arcane wisdom. So maybe, maybe it's just like a fighter. Maybe she's like, she's a little scrappy. Yeah, don't sleep on fighters. Fighters don't get love, but their battle master is very good. Um, <laughs> yes. And again, limits, limits give you room to work. If I don't have a button in my spell book to push, I have to think creatively. Um, so yeah, I like it. Don't sleep on fighters, especially tiny halfling yes. <laughs> fighters who are easily underestimated. Yes, I love that. Yes, I love I love the the juxtaposition, the comedy. It's mm. so good. Yeah, you're speaking my language. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, D four is going to give us a friendly faction. So maybe maybe they belong to this, or maybe this is an organization they're friends with. So your your favorite, the D four. What what did you get on that? Oh, I actually got a four. Okay. Uh, I think we can still be friends. That That's your favorite type. But uh, the, the Wayfarers Guild, create and update guides for travelers, especially gold-laden adventurers. Uh, so that could do it. That could serve a couple functions. Yeah. Uh, Which, could you talk a, a little bit more about that faction? Uh, well, that's, that, that is literally all I have to find it here, right? I want this open-ended so it like, uh, sparks ideas in the, in the reader, but I could either see that, I mean, one, you're trying to get the Michelin star or whatever, you know, you're trying to get in the, uh, Zagats? What's that old SNL sketch? That, whatever, those, <laughs> you're trying to get in the guidebook, right? So more people will <laughs> yeah. come visit you. Um, but then at a certain point, hopefully in your career, you're, you're going to be that gold laden adventurer. So maybe they're, you know, it's any, especially for a, a fighter without any arcane kind of uh, divination magic or something like knowing people. Information is currency in a D and D game. If you're if you're playing right, uh, more vital than hit points for sure. So knowing people who are literally writing the book on you know at least taverns, but that's that's where all the information is anyway, right? That's how you get the yeah. rumors and find out where the quests are. Um, Sick. Maybe, maybe on her adventures, uh, uh, she's also looking for like crazy, like monsters to like have, you know, like little like uh, trophies in her tavern. So like something else to like bring people in. Ooh, ooh, I like that. It's, it's going to be the restaurant with all like the the crazy crap on the walls, just like tchotchkes and like <laughs> yeah. Yeah, mounting uh, uh, whatever, like beholder heads and owl bear heads, and yeah, that's exactly. interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like we tried to renovate. I borrowed a bunch of money. That didn't exactly work, so I'm gonna have to get a little more creative in how we how we redecorate the bar. Uh, I like that a lot. I like that, and like a good fetch quest. You can't go wrong. Just like ah, yeah. love yeah, it. Perfect. Um, B six. So this is a friendly NPC, which is a great thing, players, to hand to your dungeon master, especially if you don't do much to define them. <laughs> um, so <laughs> what is what you get for the D six? Okay. I got a four again. I'm getting, there's actually a lot of fours in here. Ooh. There's four, there's three fours. Three fours. All right. So we're getting maybe fours, their middle name or something. Maybe. A, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to hold Tilly, it. Yeah. Tilly fourths and tailsmith. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Uh, what do we got for Tibbs? A disguised nymph on the run from Faye. Mediocre waitress, but a big draw with patrons. That's uh, that's great. I feel like I I feel like yeah, maybe childhood friends. Like she can't fire she can't fire the wait the waitress because they've literally been friends. Maybe her name is like uh the sell me uh Biggles B. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um and like Tilly can't fire sell me because they've been friends for years and if they did it would kind of ruin the friendship. So she's gotta keep her. But yeah. hey, she's got a heart of gold. Yeah, and she. I mean, and she's a nymph too, so that'll get you like some yeah. fey adventures down the road, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and what what's she doing when the bar closes? That's a whole interesting. That's yeah. I feel like. I feel like she she sleeps in the bar. Like I I feel like <laughs> she's squatting. What? Yeah, agreed. Yeah. She's squatting there. She lives there. Literally, like Tilly, like locks up for the night and like. And Selmy's like, hey, I, yeah, I'm just gonna like clean up for a bit and just actually like sleeping behind the bar. Tilly thinks she's actually like a great worker, <laughs> but no, she just sleeps there. So she's the first one who gets there and the first one and the last one leaves because yeah, she I does. Love, I love that. I love that. That's, that's deeply satisfying. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so there's, uh, I said there's one where maybe big number good. Uh, D10 is going to be a, a meaningful object and or a magic item. 
Um, so if it's too good, I won't hand it out at level one. Um, gotcha. But uh, yeah, the player knows that it's out there in the world or whatever. Let's see, what would you get for that 10? That's also my four. <laughs> That's a four. Uh, dog hair potion removes drunkenness, hangovers, and the effects of minor poisons. I would 100% give that to a level one. Yeah, I would. she would 100% have that in, in the tavern. That's literally, that's literally just like on one in the barn. Like she just like pours it into people's like water when they're like drunk. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's it's on the menu and like right yes. right behind the counter next to like the whatever her weapon of choice is the bite the baseball yeah. bat with spikes in it. <laughs> Maybe it's just like a board, like in construction. She just found a board with like a nail in it. Mm, mm, per perfect, perfect. Yeah, you got yeah. You start from nothing, so that it gives you just you can come up. It's great. Then you yeah. you find a regular sword and it feels good. Exactly. We we created like this whole character. This is great. <laughs> um. That's awesome. Yeah, so she that she feels very well developed. Uh, now we're gonna switch hats and we're gonna go to the to the game master side of things and we're gonna try to uh, build adventure around this character. Um, Great. And the idea is you probably have four to five players sitting around the table. So uh, oftentimes this all coalesces very nicely and you seem to be very talented at connecting these dots out of the gate um but if you have a bunch of different characters like maybe this person's evil npc is hiding out in this person's location and this monster's there and it's serving this plot hook to like it's good to like talk, give everybody reasons to go everywhere yes. um so we're gonna, do, we're gonna do a bunch of d6s so you can roll four d6s or you can roll them one at a time it's up to you Your actually choice. So funny, I have a bunch of D6s just uh, here that I have to dump out of this. This is normally my D6 like, box that uh, I just... That's because you, you like rolling stats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, four, please. Four, okay. Four D6s. We are, we are not dropping the lowest. Okay. Shake it a box. Um, um just decide on some kind of order it doesn't really matter but um the first one is going to be an antagonistic organization so a faction that is uh not necessarily super excited about our person maybe they're enemies but maybe it's just like you know medium neutral um so what do we get on our first d6 a one one the town council corrupt officials who demand frequent bribes from local businesses check yeah. I mean, that fits pretty well into uh, uh, what Tilly has as a backstory, but now we can, like, be, create a whole uh, guild, maybe, like, beggars bandits who uh, are bandits, but they're, I don't know, now disguised as, like, not disguised, but they are, you know, a, a guild that's corrupt and all that. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to get too political, but it's uh, sometimes it's a short walk to uh, strong arming uh, people on the road and uh, yeah, collecting yeah. taxes or protection from uh, small businesses. Uh, yeah, so you know, Tilly's expanding, and all of a sudden the uh, well, I don't even the, the liquor license comes due. Yes. Like, yeah. Okay, I like that. Um, all right, D6 number two is going to give us a an NPC of the same ilk. So, uh, I mean, this could rise to like the BBEG of the campaign, or it could be, you know, another someone who bullied them in childhood and now like killing them would not be great. <laughs> um, so what did we get on our second D6? Oh, I'm gonna say that's a six. Six, a uh, cutthroat uh, euchre, a crafty gambler with an ace up his sleeve and a jerk in his belt. Um, so gambler, so that's kind of, that's a, sometimes I like the ones that don't fit instantly because it makes you think of that stuff. What would you get for that? Well, I'm thinking maybe, maybe it's someone who like comes into the bar who's like a, a frequent gambler or swindler who um, like constantly like makes bets with people like in the bar and that could be like a reason why it's like driving business away but maybe uh and maybe like tilly's like thrown them out a bunch of times but like maybe they're like a uh even though they're a swindler maybe they're like a, a a noble or they know a noble and they're like well actually like my my friend's cousin's sister is on the town council mm -hmm. so you have to keep me here and then <laughs> 
it's it's starting to feel like losing this bar was a was a blessing in disguise for to hear. Uh, <laughs> perhaps perhaps <laughs> such things often go um i like that a lot i like that a lot because it's like it's changing the tone of the bar there's like the hip places across the street and now this guy's yeah playing cards and smoking cigars in the corner and making everybody yep. else uh uncomfortable but you can't kick him out either because the town council's gonna come down on you if you do yeah um oof, oof, this is great uh and i want to i want to see him talk to tips what was the nip whatever <laughs> the, uh, the, the 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 waitress who's sleeping at the bar overnight um, oh sell sell me <laughs> sell me i feel like that would be yeah sparks would sparks would fly there yeah, that'd be really funny. I feel, I feel like like he'd be like hitting on Selmy and she'd be like, great, okay, Um, so you'd like a mead? You'd like uh, an ale? Mm -hmm. And he's like, he's like, yeah, I'd like a, like, like a tank or something. And she's like, great, I'll get that right up for you. Mm -hmm. And pro probably spinning it. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, don't be rude to people who serve you food. Uh, <laughs> Golden... <laughs> That's the golden. That's that's the old. That's the D and D rule. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, just in real life too. It seems like people are way yeah. too comfortable messing with people who are could easily mess with them back. D six is going to be an evocative location. So this uh, might be a maybe a train car. This might be uh, a room in a dungeon or a whole freaking continent. Uh, what do we get on D six number three? Ooh, oh, that's another one. One, a labyrinthine network of tunnels utilized by moonshiners, bootleggers, and other creatures. Oh, that's sick. That's really sick. Yeah, maybe like uh on part of her quest, like when when Tilly and the the party that she finds, uh maybe like another reason to like the DM can be like, yeah, another reason uh, uh to bring people into the uh bar is found these like underground uh tunnels of like people bringing in illicit substances but you know they're like the best in the land so you know if you got some of that people would definitely be interested in coming yeah classic adventure fodder and we had this like <laughs> she 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 took out a loan with the wrong people to like renovate the bar because the place across the street opened up and oops there's something in the basement and rats pour out is the start of every level mm. one adventure right <laughs> like, that's, yes. um yeah yeah I and mean, just unearth this like tunnel that like and it's her fan so it's like it was like grandpa dug this right like yes. a thousand oh. years ago because she's a halfling and when like yeah. three kings ago they decided to outlaw uh booze or hair of the dog potion or <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly oh that's so sick yeah i like, I like that it. i like it i like it um all right last so second to last stop on our tour uh a d6 for the monster or, i should say a monster well <laughs> uh that is a two to a wart hog uh stinking peccaries i was just talking about this stinking peccaries that are attracted by the smells of the brewing process. Do you know what peccaries are? Because it seems like most people don't unless they've been to like Texas or whatever. No, I, I don't. <sighs> so peccaries, what's that? They're, they're, uh, they're basically pigs, right? So they're warthog, right? But um, they look a lot like pigs, but they are not pigs. Javelinas. Javelinas is what they're called in Mexico. And they are uh they smell terrible they they call, they call them like fish pigs because they like have like a pointy spine and they smell awful and they'll just like you know come ruin your day and chase you out of your campsite or something oh. um so <laughs> but they're cute i mean my wife has one on a hat they're they're also uh cute if you're far away um <laughs> stinking peccaries they're attracted by the smells of the brewing process i mean maybe this is what comes out of the the tunnels in the basement exactly. and, yeah the, the moonshine tunnels there's just like maybe there's like a i a bunch of them like a i wouldn't it wouldn't be called a swarm but like a little pack of them and uh that could be like the first like little little mini mission where maybe maybe uh maybe like the uh, uh in a little adventuring party has come to the tavern and then tilly needs help with uh, uh clearing out uh, something in her basement uh um or maybe like it stumbles out as the dm like we create like 
uh, like a bunch of these boar pigs who like come out of the basement and then the whole party has to like come together and you know you know fight them or not fight them really just kind of round them up uh yeah player's choice right you can you can kill them yeah. you can adopt them it's I'm, I'm, I'm here for it all <laughs> exactly um man i really i just had this flash when you were saying that of like the the, the 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 classic barkeep already we're the, i mean built in is this juxtaposition right but classically the barkeep is the person hiring the adventures so yeah i just she hires these people to go deal with this thing and they utterly fail <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then the next time and the rest of the party shows up and now they have to and she's like i get if you want it done right you got to do it yourself exactly <laughs> um and one of my favorite little dungeon master tricks is like you find a dead adventurer, right? That's much more interesting than a treasure chest. And it's just like, this person looks exactly like you and they're dead because this is a dangerous place. Be, yeah. be afraid. <laughs> um, exactly. Oh, that's good. I like that a lot. Um, Ew, now, now I want to run like a like a little one shot of like this just kind of like cozy, but like kind of run down CD tap, not CD, but run down tavern. And you can, like you they can say CD. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of ZD. Then they uh, <laughs> now I'm run a one shot with these characters and no, it's perfect. This little stuff. Perfect. Um, okay. Again, by the time we get here, we usually don't need it, but um, this is also not necessarily uh, only to be used right before you start a campaign. You can also like keep coming back to this when you just need a, a little creative spark, or <laughs> literally at the table when you. You had this whole adventure planned out, and they're like, eh, "I'm not going to get on the train." Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So one, uh, one final D twenty for for a plot hook, uh, adventure idea. Make it count. What you what you got? Give me a good, uh, give me a good D twenty. All right, all right. Well, I just dropped that on the ground. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay. Ooh, that's another ten. I I'm rolling ten. Yeah and fours today oh ten four is a thing ten four ten four good buddy um <laughs> after renting a room last night a patron left some sort of egg behind and now it's about to hatch Ooh. Ooh. okay okay so peccaries yeah, it... don't come from eggs but this is our world and anything can happen um, okay but... what what if yeah um what if like that whole like uh pig situation has happened and all that stuff and then maybe like the other uh party members like go to bed like she thinks like the 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 inn upstairs is like like she she thinks that selmy's like cleaned it but she really hasn't um <laughs> and then uh maybe one of like the adventurers find the egg and now the adventurers have to to like want to know what this is and bring it back to whoever or like do something with that and maybe tilly's like okay cool i'm gonna come with you guys because i also need uh stuff for my bar so mm -hmm. kind of yeah yeah because you could send them to like uh i mean the wizard it's always the wizard right identify what is this thing but it could be like uh yep. some sort of like dru druidy alchemist kind of like oh i need brewing supplies to make like my the hair of the dog potion that's a special ingredient and this person knows yep things knows nature so they could identify this egg and then eh, maybe it hatches on the way and it's too too <laughs> too late to identify it now you're responsible for this creature or it's trying to eat you awesome um, i love a good egg <laughs> just like yeah well now now what are you gonna do with this yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay sick all right that was yeah that was a good one that felt really good and i liked your yeah you brought like a very different uh very different tone to it like i would uh I would like read that novel on like a rainy day, like under a blanket, yeah, like a cup of tea or something. <laughs> yeah, nice. Awesome, thank you. That was so fun. Yeah, I mean, good. Enjoy, enjoy the one shot. Take it with my, uh, take it with my blessing. Uh, there's more where that came from. I'll send you. <laughs> there's, yeah. there's going I'll to be fifty of those. <laughs> thank you. Uh, appreciated. So yeah, everybody, go check out Taylor. She's about to explode. You heard it here first. Uh, Taylor's Tavern Tales featuring featuring Tilly now? Is that what's she coming in? Or? 
Yeah, Tilly's the new NPC. New NPC unlocked. We got Tilly. <laughs> I, I love unlocking stuff. That just, yeah, that satisfies the gamer side of me so much. Um, yeah, good stuff. Uh, be, be safe out there. Don't underestimate uh, the, the, the stories you may hear. They are, some of that stuff is real. Those, those, those folks are out there. And we, oh. uh, Dungeon Masters and players. I find um, a lot of these situations fall on the dungeon master or assumed to fall on the dungeon master because we do have the most amount of control so i'm not yeah. saying we're like off the hook here by any means um it's on the dm to like open up the lines of communication mm -hmm. but if you're a player at a table and some shit's going down yeah. you're allowed to say but, something especially if the dungeon master yeah. like they might just because they're equipped to to adjudicate the rules of a ttrpg doesn't mean they're socially equipped to deal with the situation they never yeah anticipated i think a lot of folks i think a lot of folks have a blind spot because there's a lot of willful ignorance out there but i think a lot of folks have a blind spot because they would never act that way or didn't really ex expect it to be happening and then all of a sudden mr M misogynist is acting out some weird fantasy and it's like deer, deer in headlights happen so yeah uh yeah sessions here don't speak up uh yeah. <laughs> play safe out there <laughs> uh what what is yeah beyond uh more stories uh of of uh interesting horrific things to to entertain us and learn from <laughs> uh what, yeah, what else is learn. on deck for taylor's please please learn <laughs> <laughs> what's on deck for uh for the tavern tales or or you know beyond youtube what's what's coming from taylor next oh okay um well i i am actually uh i'm gonna make more of the kind of like beginner D, &D stuff like that that kind of stuff, maybe focusing on like role play and, and you know, all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, probably a couple more of those. Uh, but what I'm really excited about is uh, I mentioned kind of briefly before that I want to do like a D&D &D playthrough, like mm -hmm. full campaign. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe, maybe like five sessions, like a little mini campaign uh, for YouTube. So uh, check out my channel because that'll probably be on there at some point maybe in the next couple months Ooh, or exciting yeah exciting go there yeah push push all of the buttons but yeah subscribe to tavern <laughs> tales um yeah hey streamers make short campaigns um like one listen to taylor because she's uh she's very savvy when it comes to these things but t t like yeah there's nothing wrong with five or six episodes of a thing because then i can watch it and not invest <laughs> 300 hours yeah, um, I, I want to make my I want to make my uh, campaign definitely more like uh, 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 consumable in in a, in a short amount of time, not not super like daunting. Because definitely just, those four hour playthroughs, like each session, like four hours or five hours or six hours, you're like, I mean, I want to, but like that's so much time. <laughs> like, uh, I'm I'm planning on making it like each uh more condensed so like each uh episode is kind of like an hour ish mm. like so like very much like go 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 so yeah yeah that's a good so even if you're not streaming try to go make decisions make choices <laughs> yeah. keep it moving uh yeah. deal with the consequences I yeah i think i'm gonna probably post it on youtube maybe maybe i'll stream it but i think probably on like a youtube series awesome yeah. Awesome. Looking forward to it. And it's, I mean, are we, are you committed to, to Dragon Train? Is that what, is that the, the launch? Is that what we're hearing or TBD? TBD, but <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I like it. Dragons on a train. Dragons on a train, uh, working title. <laughs> yeah, <we're laughs> Concept. Um, awesome. That's, ex that's exciting. I will, I will, yeah, gladly tune in for that. And yeah, and again, I, I like the sampler. So make, yeah, make 10 five episode things, not <laughs> one 50 episode campaign because it's harder for people. If you don't catch it on the ground floor, it's harder for people to get on board. Um, yeah. Once that train left the station, it's, it's a little trickier. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, thank, thank you so much for joining me, for taking the time. This has been uh, has been a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. Deeply appreciate it. Uh, thanks. And thank you everybody for watching this out there. Be kind, have fun. And yeah, we will see you next time. Bye.